boys and girls. You are listening to Bible and Praise Time with me, Miss Jane. And with me, Elsie. We are happy that you have joined in with us today. So let's get started. Our first song says, I will call upon the Lord. Today our story is about a mother with a very sad heart. She had a little girl who had a bad spirit in her. Let's hear the story now, and then we will talk about it. It is taken from Mark seven, twenty-four to 30 Near the land of Galilee was a small country called Phoenicia. The people who lived in this country were Gentiles, and many of them were idol worshippers. But because they lived so near to the home country of the Jews, many of them knew about the Jews' religion which taught of only one great God over all. The time had come when Jesus wished to be alone with his disciples, that he may teach them deeper truths before he should die and rise again. So one day he took them for a long walk. They left Galilee and entered the neighboring country of Phoenicia. Here they went into a house, thinking that no one would disturb them there. But the fame of Jesus had reached through Gentile people in Phoenicia, and they were eager to see him. Soon the news of his coming spread through the neighborhood, and Jesus saw that he could not hide himself even in a strange land. Living in that neighborhood was a poor Gentile mother whose heart was very sad. She had a child, a little girl, who was tormented by a wicked spirit. This distressed mother had heard of the great healer in Galilee who cast out evil spirits, and she longed to take her child to him, but she could not go. Then the glad news came that Jesus and the twelve of his friends were visiting in a house near her home. Quickly she left her work and ran to the house where Jesus was. When she found Jesus, she began at once to tell him about the sad condition of her little daughter. But the great healer of Galilee paid no attention to her at all. He seemed even not to hear her talk. Then his twelve friends looked scornfully upon her because she was a Gentile woman and urged their master to send her away. Fearing he might do this, she fell at Jesus' feet, worshiping him and crying, Lord, help me. The loving heart of Jesus is always touched when he hears the cry of one in need. He pitied this poor woman. He knew she had faith in his powers to heal her child, but he wished to test her faith. So he answered, I am not sent to the Gentiles, but to the lost children of Israel. And it is not fitting to take children's bread and throw it to the dogs. The proud Jews called the Gentiles dogs. And no doubt this Gentile woman knew how that Jesus spoke of her and of her people. But she was now willing even to be called a dog if only the great healer would answer her prayer. So she said, I know it is true that children's bread should not be given to the dogs. Yet we know that dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the table. And she, a Gentile dog, wanted a crumb of the Jews. Just a crumb of the healing bread for her afflicted child. Just a crumb of the healing bread with which the suffering Jews were fed. Just a crumb, she asked, just one. Would she, a Gentile, be given none? Not long did this earnest woman need to wait for an answer from Jesus. He was greatly pleased when he heard her wise reply to his words, and he said, O woman, great is your faith in me, and you shall receive just what you have asked. Go back to your home, for the wicked spirit is gone out from your daughter." Gladly the woman sprang to her feet and obeyed Jesus' words, for she believed that her child was well. And when she came home, 
she found the little girl lying on the bed, resting quietly, for the wicked spirit had gone away at Jesus' words. Elsie, we need to learn that Jesus is the only one that we can fully put our trust in. Some people just go on living their lives as if they are the only ones who are in control. Then when hard times come along, they remember God and then they go to Him for help. Sometimes our troubles come along because we are going our own way and doing our own thing without much thought of God. Because God loves us, He causes things to come into our lives to get our attention, hoping to draw us back on the right track again. We should not be angry against Him when He chastens or spanks us. But praise Him because He loves us and desires to have us doing the right thing again. In the Bible, Jesus is pictured as a rock. A big rock is solid. It stands firm and cannot be moved. Jesus is like that. And He is the foundation or rock that we should build our lives upon. Our song is about being firm on that rock. Miss Jane, Psalm 62, 6a says, He is my only rock and my salvation. And Elsie, in the book of the Bible called Song of Solomon, there is a verse in chapter 2, 4b, that says, His banner over me is love. This beautiful book is about Christ's love for his church, and we are his children. It is hard for us to completely understand the love of God, but when we think that he loved us, even though we are sinners. It should help us to know his great love for us. Our last song says, Jesus is the rock of my salvation song. Let's pray, Elsie. Thank you, Jesus, for the strength and power to build our lives upon you in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, listen next time for Bible and Praise Time with me, Miss Jane. And with me, Elsie. Goodbye. (laughs) 